What's up everybody? Today I am heading south to a tiny house festival in Texas, so I'm going to be doing quite a bit of driving. And no, it is not going to be about how I clean my kitchen. And this video is not about how I'm driving on the highway or where I'm sleeping at night. No one wants to watch a video of someone just driving on the highway, so that would be utterly boring and we're not going to do that. This video is about how I'm using that driving to add power back into my auxiliary batteries using the engine alternator to add extra power so that whenever I stop at night after driving long distances, my batteries are at 100% regardless of solar. So let's take a look at that system today and how you might be able to add it to your own adventure rig. Let's take a look. So that's right, we are, let's take this thing off. We are going to be talking about the alternator connection today and how you can get the most out of your driving and generating power without even solar necessarily and be charging your batteries. Also a little bit of a reality check. I'm currently parked in a Walmart parking lot. Life is not always awesome boondocking spots and camping. Just want to make sure that we all stick with reality. Sometimes we're filming in a Walmart parking lot. But let's hit the road, start charging our batteries and start talking about how you can do it yourself. It's officially like, I don't know, like eight hours later. I am somewhere, I think geographically, in the middle of Texas right now. I've gotta say, it is extremely hot. I've got my water bottle because I am probably getting dehydrated, but the problem is I actually, I really only own moccasins and like a pair of hiking boots. So I am clearly not prepared for Texas hot weather or anything. I am at heart a kind of northern mountain type guy. But don't worry, the heat will not get us down one, because I've got my water. Two, we've got this awesome shade from this really cool tree. Thank you, tree. And we're gonna talk about that alternator connection. So there is two main reasons why I wanna talk about the alternator connection. The first is, is because a lot of people don't realize that when their engine is running in their adventure rig, there's extra power going somewhere it's just that you're not collecting it. So it is a great option to add this connection in because you're able to then generate the power through. It is really windy. And there's just trucks consistently driving by. I think we can get this in now. So many people out there don't realize that their engine alternator was designed to kick energy back into your batteries. So when you crank over your engine, it's recharging. And it also is charging your electronics within your vehicle while you're driving. Now, the great thing about that is that a lot of times, especially in these really big rigs like this guy right back here, it is putting out so much extra power while you're driving over long distances that you have the ability to actually capture that energy into an auxiliary battery bank to then be used later. Wait for it. Just, just wait for it. All right, I think we can get this in. Reason number two of why this is such an important thing for you to consider is because it is such a less expensive option than doing a full solar system. Now, it is nice to have solar systems and I am definitely one to advocate for multiple power inputs into your off-grid system, but for many people out there, it is just way out of a price range for you and it's not necessarily something that you need when you have the alternator connection anyway. And sometimes it is a great option just to do this rather than spending so much money on solar because well a lot of times you're driving anyway so why not just use that power charge your batteries and that will get you most likely through the night where you won't have to spend all the money on those really expensive systems but let's go look actually at the system and I'll show you the actual components so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about rather than just hearing me try to explain how this is really great and useful and you have no clue actually what it looks like so let's go take a look so clearly I picked the world's greatest locations to ever film a how-to vlog but either way it's not gonna stop us we're still gonna take a look at this engine All right, what we need to do now is identify each of the specific things that you're gonna to need to find on your specific vehicle. Obviously, this is gonna be my school bus, so it's gonna be a little different if you're dealing with a van or something like that. But let's go through the parts really quick and then we'll head inside and talk about how you can do it yourself. My alternator is right there. The next most important thing that you're gonna to wanna to identify is 
your batteries. On school buses, they're on the side, and a lot of vans and stuff, they're gonna be in the engine compartment. All right, and now for the brains of the operation. This is the isolator, the fuse. This is what makes it all happen right here. I've already done the honors of emptying the garage so you guys can see what's back here, but that isolator goes to this fuse, which then goes into these batteries. All right, so we just went through all the main components very quickly that you're gonna to wanna to look for and identify on your vehicle. Now what I wanna do is go back through and kind of re-explain how the power is flowing through this system so you can understand how you can do it yourself and what you're gonna be looking for when you're trying to install it. So the first thing is figuring out the alternator. You want to know what size alternator you have because that's going to tell you about the power that it's outputting. Now obviously the size of alternator is going to affect this. A bus like mine is going to have a much larger alternator meaning it's going to pump out a bit more power than maybe a small truck, SUV, or whatever type of adventure rig you're building out. But it doesn't really matter what size it is. If you have an alternator, it is still going to be able to kick back power into your batteries. It just might not charge as quickly as a larger one. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to identify is where your vehicle battery is. It's either going to be in the engine compartment or underneath the body of the vehicle. Now this is really the start of the rest of the system. And what you're doing from this point on is essentially just connecting your vehicle batteries to your auxiliary batteries. You're gonna do this with what I was calling before the brains of the operation or the isolator and fuses. If you've never been around electronics this is probably going to sound a little confusing but essentially all you're doing is protecting both batteries with the fuses and then the isolator is kind of a switch where it's opening up the ability for power to flow from the vehicle batteries to the auxiliary batteries. The reason why we want to have an isolator is because what it's going to do is only allow that to be open or meaning the power going through it open while the vehicle is on or while the alternator is running. The reason why that is important is because if you were to not have that in there, if your auxiliary batteries were to be sucking down power and sucking down power, eventually it's also going to suck down the power of your vehicle batteries and then in the morning you won't have any power to actually start your vehicle. The isolator, when it is turned off, is going to stop that flow which is going to prevent you from draining your vehicle batteries. Now if you're still with me, you're probably at the point where you understand that at least what we're trying to do is connect our vehicle batteries to our auxiliary batteries. Now there's a couple things you're going to want to know when doing this so you can make sure you can wire it the most effective. Now before I previously said you want to know the size of your alternator. The reason why you want to know that is it's going to tell you essentially how many amps it is sending into your batteries. That's going to be important because it's going to tell you the wire gauge that you're going to want to use when wiring to your vehicle batteries. Now hold up, this is where it's going to get a little bit more confusing, but it is very important for us to understand. It's something called voltage drop. And now what that means is that essentially over distance, your 12 volt system, which is the power you're sending out of your batteries, is going to lose power over distance. So the longer the distance, you're going to want to use a larger wire so that you can send more power to kind of offset as much as you can that voltage drop. Now if you're in a van, it's not going to be a huge, huge concern. If you're in a 35 foot school bus, you've got 35 feet of voltage drop, so you're going to lose some power there. So just look into the numbers and figure out exactly which wire is going to be best for you. Now the next thing you're going to want to think about is your actual isolator. Now the isolator, for it to be on and off when the vehicle's on, you're going to want to wire it into an ignition wire or into a manual switch that you can turn off and on. This is going to be really important because if you want it to turn off when the vehicle is off, it needs to know that. So you need to connect the isolator into the system so that it knows when the vehicle is off and on to prevent you from accidentally draining your batteries and only having the entire circuit open when you actually want it. The real reason why this is such a good option for many people out there is because it is a less expensive option than going through an entire solar system. Now, like I said before, it is good to have various inputs into your system, but if you're more of a real road traveler or just looking for that extra energy on the cloudy days, having this connection can really be a lifesaver because all you have to do to get energy is turn on your engine, flip the isolator on, and then you are then powering up your auxiliary batteries. So it is a great thing to have even if you already have a really good solar system. It might might be something that you want to add into your existing system. So it is time to get back on the road. I started driving a little bit and I just saw this sunset and I just wanted to share it with you because it is, it's pretty good. Oh, I've got to say, today has definitely been one of the hottest days that I've had to experience in the past year. Uh, for anyone who lives in Texas, you guys got some pretty some pretty hot humid days, but this sunset totally makes up for it. And 
like I was just saying, I've got a couple more hours to go until I actually get to my destination. I don't know if I'm gonna make it all the way. But either way, I'm gonna be driving, I'm gonna be charging my batteries, which means it doesn't really matter where I stop because I'm gonna have 100% power. So it looks like uh, we finally got to the destination. Batteries are completely charged, but I think it's pretty apropos that uh, I am currently now in a Walmart and uh, this whole thing started in a Walmart, so I just want to say uh, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you want more content, and uh, see you guys next time.